Hello again, everybody. In a question and answer video that I did somewhat recently, um, I got a question about wild edibles. And on my blog, those of you that have followed my blog have uh, seen, uh, you know, different thing posts I've written about uh, wild edibles, and there's been an emphasis on mushrooms. That I'm a big fan of wild mushrooms, and sometimes people ask me, oh, "Well, what do you do with those mushrooms?" Uh, usually Americans, uh, where I live in Sweden, um, most people uh, are aware of what to do with the wild mushrooms. There's a much stronger uh, kind of wild edible mushroom uh, cooking culture. or uh, It's in kind of the culinary um, uh, cuisine of uh, Scandinavia. Um, and in the U.S., there are some uh, pockets of the U.S. where it, it is more popular than others. I've noticed, for instance, morals. Uh, not in, not in like moral as in what is right and wrong, morels as in the mushrooms, the springtime mushrooms. They are more popular in uh, certain parts of the country. And when I lived in the U.S., um, that was one of the mushrooms that I picked on occasion. But yeah, so I thought I was in the middle of cooking uh, the mushrooms yesterday. My family and I went on a day hike, so I thought I'd just do a quick video to illustrate some of the things you can do with wild mushrooms. So. You see here, I just made myself a snack with some hedgehog mushrooms. Uh, in Swedish, that's uh, tag svamp. And uh, hedgehog mushrooms, I like, I don't love. I would give them on 1 to 10, kind of a 7 out of 10. I'll take them if I can get them, but I'm not going to go out of my way. I'm not going to cross a bog or anything to go pick a few of them. They're okay. One uh, advantage they do have is they do, uh, when you uh, fry them up like this, I kind of saute them. I just saute them with some onion and some white wine to, uh, after I caramelized the onions a bit, I did a deglaze with some white wine and the mushrooms. And I just put this on top of a piece of bread and put a little bit of salt and that was it. It's got a pleasant, mild flavor, hedgehog mushrooms. Um, it, to me, it kind of tastes like a weaker, kind of dialed down flavor of a golden cantadel, which I'll get to uh, next. Uh, so the golden cantadel is one of my favorite mushrooms. Uh, I would give that nine and a half out of ten. I love it. It's uh, got a unique flavor all to its own. To me, describing the flavor of golden cantadel is like asking me what does chocolate taste like. It's just it's hard to describe. It's so unique and so intense. You have to just try it to understand it. But the best, the closest I can get to describing it is that it tastes like the smell of when you breathe in deep. When you're in the woods after a rain, like a heavy rain, like in the morning, it there's hints of like a mothy, earthy goodness combined with a that just unmistakable mushroom kind of meaty flavor, umami flavor, and it smells absolutely amazing when you cook it. But yeah, while I'm blabbing, why don't I just show some of it off? You can see it's here now. It's been stewing a bit. What I did is I, uh, this was about 600 grams of mushrooms and that's after I trimmed and cleaned them. Uh, so we had a pretty uh, good run yesterday on our day trip. So that's not bad. It looks like it's a good mushroom year this year. So here you see the golden cantadels in there. I, uh, you know, just um, after cleaning them by hand, I kind of ripped them into smaller pieces. And I sauteed them in some um, olive oil and a bit of garlic. Just a bit though, because the garlic is more of a complement to the flavor, but also can remember that garlic is a natural preservative. And what we're going to do with this batch is we're going to use some for a sauce for dinner later, probably. But also we're going to freeze some of this for later use later on. And uh, yeah, the garlic helps to preserve the... Uh, the the mushrooms and which will or if we want to make a sauce and preserve that uh, we can do that too so here you see the cantadel gets nice and soft um, but it does retain some of its texture which is nice it has kind of a, a pleasant kind of uh, fibery texture the stem the caps get a, a bit more soft um, but yeah so here's what a um, batch of around 600 grams of cantadel looks like after being sauteed um, the water from the mushrooms will, you know, kind of get uh, cooked out. Uh, I did add a lot, just a, a bit of white wine uh, to them. Um, because they were a bit dry, it's been a week of uh, 
uh, warmer weather. So I, I added a lot, just a, a little splash of white wine. But yes, this will be transformed into sauce, divided up into portions, frozen, and it is uh, absolutely uh, amazing flavor. Yeah, golden cantaloupes. When I went to the supermarket last and checked the price, it cost here in Sweden 350 crowns uh, for a kilo, if I remember correctly. So that's about um, how much would that be in dollars? Uh, I think it's about 10 to 1, so it's about 35 dollars a kilo, something like that. So we're not, it's not you know cheap this stuff. So uh, hedgehogs, they don't sell in the supermarket here. Usually in the supermarkets here, you'll find golden cantarelles and funnel cantarelles. But the season right now, this is in August, the season is not picked up yet for the funnel or brown cantarelles. Uh, yeah, and a little trivia. Hedgehog mushrooms are actually closer. Their DNA is closer to golden cantarelles than golden cantarelles are to uh, brown or funnel cantarelles. The brown or funnel, can funnel can cantarelles uh, they look more similar, uh, but the brown cantaloupes do not have as much of an intense flavor as the uh, gold cantaloupes. But yeah, just a quick video on what to do with um, a few of the wild mushrooms, uh, what my family does with wild mushrooms. A disclaimer, maybe I should have said this at the beginning of the video, but I'll put that in the description too, just to be um, crystal clear, abundantly clear. When it comes to any kind of wild edible foods, I've said this before, I'll say it again, exercise extreme caution. Obviously, if you pick a mushroom you're not familiar with, many of them are poisonous, uh, and poisonous to the extent that you'll get very sick, violently ill, um, but also it can kill you. There are many deadly mushrooms. That, of course, it goes for plants as well. Be very careful. There are poisonous plants that are deadly poisonous or just make you very ill poisonous, so be very careful when it comes to any kind of wild edible. Um, read books on the subject, but better yet, um, you want to, when you get into more advanced, you know, um, foraging, you want to meet someone who knows what they're doing. Talk to an older person with experience, talk to somebody who has been out there who can teach you, or even better, you know, go with them out into the woods or nature to pick or forage, so you get hands-on you know, experience directly from a trustworthy source. But yeah. Okay, uh, happy foraging out there. Uh, and uh, hope this was uh, helpful or enjoyable to watch. And maybe in the future I'll do more wild edible type videos or include recipes or whatever. But all right, take care and goodbye.